Hey there, welcome back. First of all, I want to congratulate you for getting to this point. You're on a good path and thank you for listening to my course. In this part of the lecture, I am going to show you how to build a simple Instagram statistics scraper and how easy it is to get certain kind of data. I am going to show you how to get the number of followers, the number of followings, the number of uploads, the avatar link, and also the full name of any Instagram user. And I'm going to show you this because this works for even private accounts. Just a quick notice before we start, keep in mind that these structures change and the code that I'm writing right now might not work months from now. Like I said previously, with scraping you can expect of almost anything and you must adapt. All right, let's get directly into it and see how fast I can show you how to build this and do it yourself. Right here I have a simple index.js file just like we had before with only the request and the Cheerio library imported. Alright, so I already have Will Smith from Instagram and what should we do right now? We should take a look at the structure of the page. So right click and inspect elements. Okay. Let's do it like this and let's see what we have right here. Okay, let's take a look for example in the 22 million followers. Inspect this element and see how we can catch this. Remember, what we are looking for is classes with a certain kind of names that don't repeat themselves or IDs that we can catch on to and get the proper text that we want from the page. But in this case, as you can clearly see, the classes look a bit odd and that's because it's a React platform and this React platform generates the HTML and the classes automatically with some random and dynamic names, which unfortunately makes it hard for us to scrape this kind of data. So what should we do in this case? Firstly, I want to take a look at the network tab clear all the requests that are happening and give it a refresh. I want to see what exactly happens here and if there are some requests to some kind of API that we can catch on and get some data. First let's filter them and only show the XHR requests and not show images or JavaScript files. Okay, we can see that we have a query hash request that uses an API endpoint and we can see what we get from this API call. Data, user and this is typical response for Instagram. Node, cover media, okay so we get some kind of details right here. The owner, profile pic, the username, the title, okay and let's see what we have a bit below. Okay, so we have a quick look and overall look over the first request. Let's take a look at the second one, see what we have right here. We expect the same structure, okay, data, user, edge owner to timeline media, count 255. Okay, this actually means the posts, the post numbers. Okay. If we open the edges, I actually know what this is. These are the actual posts and post data that the user has uploaded to Instagram. So it only gets the first 12 pictures. If we scroll a bit down, you will see that another request is happening containing the other multiple uploads that this user has. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and get back to where we started because we don't actually want to scrape data about the contents of the user, the uploads, the highlights and everything. We firstly want to get the simple statistics, which are the post numbers, the followers, the full name and the following, and also the avatar. So we saw the requests, we saw the source of the page, but the thing is that we saw the source of the page the HTML after the website has rendered. We firstly want to check the source of the page before it has rendered. How do we do this? 
basically we can easily right click on the website and view page source. This will make another request and get directly the source of the page without it rendered. Remember why we are looking for this. We are looking for this data in so many places because we want to find the best, easiest and fastest way of getting this data. We don't want to make unnecessary calls, unnecessary checks when we can easily find it in some place else. Okay, let's start scrolling and see what we have right here. We can see there's a lot of JavaScript as expected and we can see some meta properties with the title and also probably here is some kind of image related to Will Smith. We can check this. Yeah, this is his avatar. Let's scroll a bit below and see what we have. Okay, it's getting interesting right here because this is JSON data and it's starting to look interesting. Okay, let's try and find where the JSON data starts. Okay, it seems that it starts right here. Let's try and copy this and find the end of the JSON. Okay, it seems that here is about to stop. All right, and that's it. Copy this and I want to go and validate this JSON and see if it's validated JSON and we can easily catch it and parse it. So how do we do this? Easily write JSON validator and use the first one. Paste the JSON right here and click on validate JSON. And as you can see, the result says that it's valid JSON, which is a good sign. And this means that if we start to scrape this part of JSON, then we can easily introduce it into our Node.js parser. What I mean by that, I will show you a bit later on. But first, we want to check the JSON contents and see if these are the details that we are looking for. Let's scroll a bit down and right here we already see user property that has a biography. This is the description. Okay, extra parameters right here, external URL and right here we have the followed by count, the followers numbers. And here we have the edge follow with 118, which I think it means yes, uh, the following numbers. And yeah, uh, the full name, the ID. And also right here we have the profile public pick URL and in HT also. Let's check this link quickly. Yes, indeed, this is a higher <laughs> resolution image for his avatar that we can easily scrape also. And yeah, I think that's it. We checked enough, let's go and actually start to scrape this.